Judge in the Salt Center, a past city council member, and Jesse Selleck, and I really don't know too much about you, Jesse, I believe, but I, when you do come up, you can introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, I do know Linda has been a spark plug, I've known Linda for 45 years, is a spark plug to many projects in our community. When she gets started in something, it gets done. I assume because Jesse's hanging around with her, she's got that same energy. One thing that, uh, of the many accomplishments that Linda has done, being that we're over here on Kennedy Boulevard, if you've been around Tampa for more than 25 years, you remember what Kennedy Boulevard was like. And look at it today, you can walk from the Platte Street Bridge all the way to Dale Mabry, and it's a totally different vibe feeling, and we can thank Linda for that. She stuck to it for many, many years when everybody was telling you couldn't have it done. Anyway, that having been said, who should I give the microphone to, Linda I'll or Jess? I'll start. Thank you, and thank each and every one of you for being here so bright and early this morning. It is my great pleasure to introduce my, my colleague and, and friend, Jesse Stelling, and together we are the founding members of Friends of Kylie Garden. So this, this is poignant. This is, a, these are photographs of what Kylie Garden looked like right after it was built. And I really hope that you all have an opportunity to experience it then. Please raise your hand if you did. Oh, a few lucky people here. Maybe a third of the people here. Good. Well, Kylie Garden, we're going to talk about the past, present, and the future. The past is this. I grew up in Tampa, Florida, and the big excitement, which was very limited when I was growing up, the big excitement was driving down what's now Ashley Street and watching the very large racks run from the warehouses <laughs> next to the water across the street and trying to count them because it was just deteriorating worse. The good news was in the 60s, we got some great society money and the city came in, built Ashley in its current configuration. The warehouses were torn down and Curtis Hickson uh, exhibit hall was built. We're, we saw many concerts, it was a big 60s building. And then behind it was this little tiny Tampa Museum of Art where I worked. One day, Mayor Martinez announced that the city of Tampa was going to sell the Rose Garden adjacent to the museum and the city parking lot that was located on the corner of Ashley and Kennedy to the Bank of America, Nations Bank in those days. And they were going to build a, a headquarters there and a garden. And so I was incensed. I was a young, you know, person who worked at the museum, and I said, there should be some public conversation. What kind of deal is this? The mayor announces it, city council rubber stamps it. I said, if I were on city council, I would insist that they have a design competition and a public conversation about what's put there. Fast forward, I did run for city council, I did get elected, and I was 100% wrong about what was built there. I was concerned it would be something unattractive. Instead, it is the most beautiful building in our region. It is glamorous. Nations Bank spent $150 million. That is an expensive building 30 years ago. $150 million, and they hired the best architect, uh, Harry Wolf, to do this very complicated building, and Harry invited his friend, Dan Kiley, which is why it's called Kylie Garden. He invited Dan Kiley to do the adjacent garden, and this was the most important part. Oftentimes, a building's here, its surroundings are there, there's no relationship. In this case, Harry Wolf and Dan Kiley worked hand in glove to create a intellectually stimulating, drop-dead, gorgeous combination of structure and surroundings. And now I'm going to have Jesse explain the basis of the design because I can't do it. <laughs> I'll take a picture. Oh, good. Excellent. She'll be Anna White. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's so nice to meet you. My name is Jesse. I am, the way I fit into this equation, I'm a downtown lover. Mm, hi. Um, I'm a downtown resident and downtown business owner, and one of my neighbors is here today. It's great to see you, Dan. Uh, so I get to look out over Kylie Garden every morning and then walk my dog through there every morning. 
So that's where I did it. What she would like me to speak to you about is the Fibonacci sequence, which gets me very excited and I talk very quickly. And also why I brought notes, because when I'm really excited about something, I forget to breathe. <laughs> I lost the lack of oxygen means lack of notes. So the Fibonacci slow down. Slow down. <laughs> the Fibonacci sequence was first introduced to us in 1300 years ago. Um, it was introduced to the West in 1202 by Leonardo of Pisa, uh, also known as Fibonacci. He's the same man that also introduced Arabic, uh, Arabic numerals to the West which is why we don't need Roman numerals anymore. Um, the sequence basically goes like... Yeah, this is mine. too. Can you hear me now? Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to hear what you have to say. <laughs> it's been the first time that it wasn't really necessary. Um, so the sequence basically, and the Fibonacci sequence, is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. Basically, the reason that it comes to life is you add the number to the previous number. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, and so on. Um, you can also divide any of the Fibonacci numbers to a previous one and get a number, the same number, 1.618, which some of you might know as the golden ratio. And I know it's very important. And math is not what people want to be thinking about when the coffee is still settling into your brains. So instead of doing numbers, let me tell you why it's important visually. You can see the Fibonacci sequence in almost every part of nature. It's in flower petals, it's in cauliflower, it's in honeybee colonies, it's in our bodies, it's everywhere. Seashells. Seashells. Succulents. Yeah. Pretty much anywhere. And so modern applications have even used it for investing. And even the track of the spread of COVID, when they were seeing the numbers increase, the Fibonacci sequence. Kind of a magical number. Um, the ancient Greek sculptor Phidias used that golden ratio, ratio because he felt that it was the physical perfection of the human body. So the length of your body, body of your feet, your navel, things like that. And Harry Wolf and Dan Kiley used the sequence to determine window sizes, arrangements, proportions, and patterns of all three parts of that garden and the, how they interwork with the building. And that's why those parts work so coherently as a design, so perfectly because it is part of nature. And it's so, it's so beautiful. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you can see from these pictures of the way Kylie Garden Originally looked when it was first constructed. You want to change mics? Yeah. Ah, okay. All right. When it was first constructed, you can see it was lush. There were 800 grape myrtle trees. There were made uh, palm trees lining the major alleys or lines of trees. The scale of the concrete decorative portions that all reflect the Fibonacci sequence. And if you go into the round building, you can see he was Harry Wolf was basing it on the basilica. You can see these marks in the floor that all indicate the sequence. And if you were to go into the cube, which I personally think is the most extraordinary space in town, the large round windows that are so exquisite are also reflect this. So Tampa just walked into this gem of a building in a garden. And the design of the two are inextricably linked. So, fast forward, the bank. Yeah. This time. The bank sell. So the bank turns the maintenance of the garden over to the city of Tampa. The city of Tampa, and I was on city council for 20 years. We are busy. We are busy doing many things. The maintenance of a very special gem of a design is not something that we have the capacity to do. And unfortunately, it kind of becomes a ruin. Pam Iorio becomes the mayor. There are complaints about leaks in the parking. She hires an excellent um, design firm. They get rid of the trees. They get rid of the pavement. They rebuild the membrane that protects this roof garden water 
from the two levels of parking below it. When it's reconstructed, the engineer, Ron Sill from Reynolds Smith and Hill, says, we can put the trees back. Pam does not go with it. This breaks my heart. I was, I was on city council at the time, bus, but it, it didn't, as you can tell, the trees weren't returned. I went to Bob Blackmore. He wasn't into reinvesting in the trees. To put the trees back would actually cost less than a million dollars. The issue initially with the trees was twofold. They put in the wrong trees. They put in regular crepe myrtles instead of dwarf crepe myrtles. And they put in the wrong soil. So I'm, I don't know, but I learned that the right kind of soil for a roof garden contains a lot of vermiculite, the really light stuff, so that it isn't too heavy and porous and doesn't go through the membrane and, and wet the parking below. So this is a solvable problem. And the, the man who engineered this said, we can solve this which is really heartening news. Which brings us to where we are now. Jesse, take the good mic. <laughs> Back to the good mic. Where we are right now is a very inspirational stage of the whole project, I think, the happiest stage. Because we're looking at potential. We're looking at possibility. We put together a website that explains the beauty behind the whole thing, explains the significance of the design, and you can visit that at kindegarden.com, singular. A lot of people say kind of gardens, kind of garden. Uh, kindegarden.com, I encourage everybody to go and take a look at that. We have a whole plan of action put in place. Most of it involves conversation, just like this one. Trying to educate, enlighten, get people excited about how kind is really a lot of, it's so funny, <laughs> as a photographer, a lot of people are like, let's take pictures of Curtis Hickson, and they think Kylie is part of Curtis Hickson, when really, what it is, is a, it's a sophisticated sister garden. It's elevated in every way. Literally, you have to go upstairs. Oh, I like that. Ooh, yeah, That's I like that. <laughs> <laughs> go upstairs to the sophisticated intellectual garden. It's absolutely beautiful. And so if we can start that conversation, if we can start people to understand the importance the cultural significance to Tampa, then it can go a long way. So, this is a plan. What we've done is recognize that the first step is education. Fortunately, there's a national organization that is an advocacy group for beautiful public spaces. It's called the Cultural Landscape Foundation. And a couple of years ago, I was in New York City and saw their exhibition called The Legacy of Dan Kiley, and I was not out. It shows his brilliant work all over the country. So we're bringing it to Tampa in April of 2022. Right now, it's, um, we're raising money to bring it here, and we'll exhibit it in the most perfect place, the Florida Museum of Photographic Arts, which is located in the cubes immediately adjacent to the garden. So we can talk about Dan Kiley and then you can go out and see it. And we're using all of this as the kickoff for the initiative to re-fix the amphitheater, which is physically there, but it's really, it needs, it needs another coat of paint or another coat of something. And to get the trees back. So there will be two levels to this initiative. The grassroots level, which you are all part of now, you, all have your official Friends of Kylie mug, and we will then invite you to donate to Friends of Kylie. And um, that money will go to put on this exhibition at the MOBA. And then we're going to ask people who can put more zeros behind it to help invest in the trees. And, and uh, we're going to ask public entities, private entities, businesses, particular businesses who look down on the garden, I think would literally have a vested interest. And we're working with all kinds of sister organizations. I'm a member of the American Institute of Architects, uh, not for profit, which is called um, Center for Architecture and Design. And so with, under the umbrella of that, Kylie Gard, Friends of Kylie Garden exists. 
and we're supporting this because we believe in beautiful design for our community. It's also being supported, and we have a representative here this morning, Rachel from the Tampa Downtown Partnership, which is, and maybe you'd like to say a few words about that, but Sean Drinker is a founding um, friend, and we have, um, the, we've talked to the current chair of the Gaspar Music Festival, who you know has their fabulous spring music festival there, and we look forward to many additional partnerships individual, corporate, city, everybody. We're talking to everybody. And, we'll, and, and Jesse and I will take this show on the road. Absolutely. So, anything else? Oh, Jesse did create this fabulous website. We'll send you information, and we hope you visit there. But most important, go visit it now. It's two-dimensional. The way a garden is supposed to be is three-dimensional. So think of it as it's currently like frozen orange juice. And what we want to bring back is fresh squeeze. And on that note, we invite questions.